bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. I'm gonna be uh, drawing some stuff, drawing some Ginyu guys, and uh, yeah, see where it goes. <laughs> I already started. I already got going. So. I'm going to uh, start rendering these guys up. I'm just doing like a composition that's kind of similar to how they stack themselves. If you've ever seen the, the Ginyu Force, kind of like the column they make. I'm just doing that with them slightly separated as they go up. This like whole, uh, you know, tiered thing that they got going. I might have to actually increase this canvas size vertically a little bit in order to fit the last dude in here but yeah this is this is what i'm working on so what's up hey everybody i'm gonna kind of chime in here and there so if you have any questions or whatever else feel free to leave in the chat and if you're if you want to see the beginning of this process sketching out everything i'm recording this all for patreon so if you're not already a patron if you're not already a patron if you're not already a patron you can join the link is in the uh, description below and I will be doing a comprehensive walkthrough of this one I think this is the one I'm going to do like the full tutorial to show like exactly what I'm doing step by step and kind of break everything down because I haven't done that yet with this uh, specific process that I've been working on for a while so yeah all right everybody Let's let's get it rolling. Get back to this. There's been so many versions of the Ginyu Force that I'm not crazy about the kind of newer versions where they look a bit, I don't know, too clean or something. I like the weirder, dumpier looking versions from the original uh, show where they're kind of like their first appearance. I don't like the way that they've changed them to be sleeker or something or simplified them a little bit. I think they look cooler from their first appearance. What's my favorite uh, DBZ underrated character? Hmm, good question. Probably my favorite DBZ character in general is like Mr. Satan. <laughs> I don't know, let me think. There's a bunch. I don't have a bunch of like, What? what's, Gohan's name when he's uh when he transforms into like that superhero. I forget the name of that character. That one was I always thought that was a really cool design. It kinda goes back to like Toriyama's like mechanical stuff where he does like all the really cool like detailed mechanical drawings of like machines and different vehicles, different like motorcycles, one wheeled things and whatnot. I always thought that stuff was cool. Uh, the brush I'm using for rendering yeah great say I'm in the brush I'm using for rendering is just the sketching chrome thin and sketching chrome large brushes that come with Krita so that's what I'm drawing with here and what I'll render up as well alright so let's just I'm going to get to drawing
can you get rid of the color jitter from the thin chrome brush? I don't know. I, I usually just use this one with like black uh, when I'm rendering, just like straight up kind of inking style. I don't use it for kind of colored lines or anything. So I, I never really worry too much about that. But I, I like the color jitter on the actual uh, render. The render brush, the one that's not like a straight up inking brush. It gives just like a little bit of variance, which I, I really like for the color. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to increase this canvas size. Hey Dave, have you done any changes to the Chrome Thin Brush? I had to change the line width to 1 in the brush settings for it not to lag and look similar to yours when you use it. This might help others. Well hey, there you go. Uh, Shooty says to stop the color jitter. You, he says yes, uncheck random RGB in the brush settings. There you go. So are you just sketching with it? When I color pick, I notice a bit too much for my liking. Uh, yeah, I, I just sketched with this um, chrome thin brush. I never do full colors with this one. My wife is in the chat, by the way. She's the moderator on this, so if you have any questions, she might uh, jump in and answer some stuff. Because I'm not really looking at the chat all that much. zoom in on these guys so you can see what I've done so far. So right now I'm just trying to sketch in basic forms and get a little bit of values down before I go in and do any rendering. So pretty straightforward. Just getting some sketches in there so I have something to refer to. Yeah. Uh, Lily's saying I need a new drawing program. I use Psy, LOL, which is kind of primitive compared to this. I, I think that program's not too bad. I've never really been able to use it. I've watched people use it on YouTube, and I think it's, it seems pretty cool. Um, Crit is a free program, though, so you can just download this whenever. <laughs> get the brush I'm using and just go for it. It takes a bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, I, I find that it's super efficient.
like I can do my whole drawing and rendering and if you saw the um, the uh, kind of inked necromancer girl that I just posted up yesterday I think I think that was yesterday uh, that was all done with this brush how come I'm not using clip studio um, after finding how good Krita was for specifically like sketching and all that I've really just kind of switched to this primarily I use uh, clip studio for inking though like uh, I work a concept art job and in that job I mostly do uh, clip studio work because it's more of like a comic style so yeah it still has its place in my workflow I use it every day but for paintings, I find that this is a uh, way more effective. I can kind of fly through images working this way. I mean, honestly, the fact that Crit is free and it's it's this good for like if this is the only thing I use it for ever, then you know <laughs> it's, it's more than enough. Uh, but yeah, you can donate for Crita because it is all just you know done for the love. Yeah, I stopped, uh, somebody in the chat was saying that they were considering abandoning Photoshop for, or Clip Studio. Um, well, not abandoning Clip Studio, abandoning Photoshop for Clip Studio. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so hard to, to love Photoshop. Like, my goodness, how much that program messes up. It's nuts. Like, I, I have such a hard time with that. Honestly, like, I use it for painting a lot and I don't know even then I, I still find it to be such a pain to use I stopped updating mine a long time ago because every update just stunk <laughs> I was like I don't give a shit about the new features I just wanted to use mixer brushes so I upgraded from like CS6 which I was using for years and then I just like that, that's the only thing I did was update to that and as soon as I did it, my computer just basically died like using it. It just couldn't handle it, the program anymore. So I had to upgrade my whole setup, which is fine because I needed to do it anyways. And then after that, it's like for as many good things as they added since CS6, it's like it's not a whole lot. Like it's not like it's it, it just feels more bloated to me kind of coming from that workflow but the brushes do feel better in some instances so there's that but in general it's thanks for me it's like fine for painting but yeah <clears throat> Whitney's asking if you do any kind of photo bash or 3d compositing Photoshop is still the way to go oh yeah for sure but if you do, like, I see people who work in comics use Photoshop primarily. I think that's wild. I'm like, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> I feel like I would freak out. <laughs> Haven't used Photoshop to do inks in a uh, No way. Like, it's just not nearly as good as the other programs. Like, Clip Studio, I mean, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing in Photoshop, but like, I feel like Clip Studio just blows it out of the water when it comes to inks. Uh, this right here is Krita. And 
That's weird. Why is it doing that? Sorry, I'm trying to find a decent way to compose this. I'm measuring things with my finger right now. <laughs> hey, Dan. Yeah, their haircuts are everything. The haircuts need to be spot on. I didn't realize it was that easy to change the crop. <laughs> Can I tell you that's the first time I've ever cropped something again in in, <laughs> in uh, Krita. That's pretty funny. That was easy. I just am still learning this program. I don't know a whole lot about it. gonna need to put on some motivational music in a minute I have a feeling that I bet I, I got kind of sick today like my stomach got pretty destroyed so I, I'm feeling a little bit wiped out so I'm trying to get my my energy back somehow <laughs> I wanted to do something cool for the stream so I figured I might as well do a Ginyu Force image So this style, I don't know how many of you are like familiar with the the various kind of Toriyama iterations there've been for like the characters. This is my least favorite. This style with like these really thin lines and very chunky shading. I think it stinks. <laughs> it stinks. I don't know where this came from, but like this look is my least favorite Dragon Ball Z look ever. Like my goodness. And then there's this stuff, which I can't find a big picture of it, but like this kind of grainier look with the more natural brush or ink drawings and whatnot, like that's so much better than this. This looks like, I don't know, clip arty or something. Like it was done with a line tool or, you know, like it's way too precise and sterile. It feels very boring to me. This is a good in-between. This one right here. There's so many different versions, but this one's way better than that last one. It has so much more kind of a energy to it. It's nice. But yeah, whatever that transition into like purely, I mean, this is the one we're looking at right now has like super digital look because somebody just put colors over the inks. But like the, uh, the like super digital look that Toriyama moved over to after a certain point, that's my least favorite era. So I'm trying to find the Ginyu Force that doesn't look like that. <laughs> like, you, you know that time period where Toriyama was doing, um, like, the Chrono Trigger illustrations? Like, that that type of style with, like, the markers and the inks and on the paper and the texture, like, all that is so much cooler. It looks awesome. It still looks great. But, man, that's one of the only kind of arguments, I mean, like, you know when people's that like old argument about digital versus traditional like blah 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 it's like yeah who gives a shit like you can do good things with both of them 
But if you don't know what you're doing digital and you're just going for like the ease of it and you never like figure out a way to carry over that energy from the old stuff, man, it could really look a lot worse digitally. That's a good one. All right, I'm good. Oh my goodness, yeah, the PS2 games, and, well actually, I'm trying to think of it happened before that. I'm pretty sure there was like a PlayStation 1 Dragon Quest game that had that first super digital style to it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was Dragon Quest 8 or something like that, that was like real intense. Which, I can't remember actually. I don't remember which one is the one with the hero dude with the yellow bandana, but that one had like the very digital, weird airbrush look to it. It's rough. And I'm a huge Toriyama fan. Don't don't get me wrong, I'm not shitting on him. I just I just feel like when he's on paper it's it's magical. <clears throat> I'm just looking over the chat right now, so there's a little lull here. That's why I'm just kind of flipping through. Riley is asking, I got a question. How loose is too loose for concept art? I get worried that some of my details are not clean enough, though I feel like it would take too long if I cleaned up everything. Um, it's, I guess that's like a, well, the question for me would be, uh, are you asking from the standpoint of building a concept art portfolio, or are you asking from the standpoint of working on a concept art job? Because if you're working on a concept art job, you can get away with very loose, initial, sketchy ideas, because really you're just going for something that's going to structurally work or just convey the idea in the fastest way possible. It's like, if that's the case, then no, it doesn't really matter. You can imply detail and get away with a lot. But if you're talking about portfolio stuff to like make it look like a finished piece of concept art that they'd use for like an art book or something, that's a whole different story where, yeah, you probably want to render things up a little but I'd still say you don't want to overdo it you don't want to like put too much detail in everything and then all of a sudden you know it reads too sterile or or just like everything's too sharp and or inorganic or yeah there's a definite balance to it all living in my comfort zone right now. Just drawing a composition of portraits. Come on. That's how you know I've had diarrhea all day. You think I'm here to test myself? To learn something? I don't think so. I'm here to draw again, you guys because my electrolytes went down the drain.
do oh, so what is your process do you do the initial build up in Krita and paint the rest in Clip Studio I build up all the values in uh, Krita and then I will do all the rendering in the beginning in Krita followed by a pass in Photoshop and then pretty much everything else is done in Photoshop unless I'm doing like hard light things and whatnot like some of those I like kind of carving out in Krita first a Wasm says, what motivation music do you often listen to to bring back the energy? If you have a playlist to share, that'd be awesome. I don't know. I listen to a bunch of stuff, but I, I like like the corny like 80s montage music. Like That always gets me going. That, that gets the right energy for me. I know it's like supposed to be ironic music or like you laugh at it, but I, li I listen to it with complete earnest <laughs> earnestness. Dave, for your original designs, do you get a solid idea before drawing, or you just go with the flow? Uh, it can go either way. Sometimes I start from a place of just winging it, finding shapes and things and sketches. But I usually have an initial idea of like what I'm doing. I might I might go in and think I'm doing one thing and end up doing another, but. In general, when I sit down to start, I have some semblance of an semblance of an idea, but it can change as I kind of find shapes and things, and figure something else out. This guy's looking like, I think his name's Zen, the intergalactic ninja, or <laughs> whatever his name was. You know what I'm talking about? That like blue guy from the 90s. It's a, uh, I forget who made that comic initially. There's really cool Tirada drawings of that guy from Nintendo Power. just imagining my wife Kim who's moderating in the chat here having to listen to this doom music wondering what questions I'm covering 
she has to like listen for me to respond to people. <laughs> on. see my face right now but I'm making this wicked grin of a face as I render this Dave do you always work from grayscale to color no not really but I have been a lot lately I'm mostly thinking of this as like a sketch stage in less of like a grayscale to color stage. Because I, I do a lot of uh, painting over my values even after I do the grayscale. It's, it's really just kind of like a sketchy phase. Even even after it's rendered, it's still I still consider it kind of a sketch if I'm planning on taking it to like a finished painting. to a really cool place with this brush where you're just kind of using it to uh well using it <laughs> i think i just said completely the wrong thing i was going to say um you get to a cool place with this brush where if you lighten up your brush stroke as you go you can really get some expressive lines it's a it's very much like a feel thing with this critter brush which is nice because it's, you have to kind of think differently when you use it. It's not the same as every other program. I really like it. I'm definitely grinning like this and holding my belly. I think it's just a prerequisite when you're drawing that you gotta make the faces of the characters you're rendering. I used to be self-conscious of that. 
and that was a long time ago. Now I just look like a complete moron when I work, and I've accepted it as my fate. It's just my sickly, wicked grin. Corruption. Evil. You better watch out, Goku, I'm coming. just saying that she she sits uh, in a seat that's she can't see my screen so she just tries to guess what I'm drawing based off of the face I'm making if it's an angry <laughs> if it's a face of pure malice it's usually a fight <laughs> so stupid if you see my chagrin I'm usually drawing a sly fella of ill means. <laughs> Bad intentions. Alright, this dude needs to get smaller. Trying to figure out where everybody should go. I feel like I gotta move them together. Otherwise, it's not really gonna work. I guess my music's over. I gotta get new, new uh, monster music to play. Man, this dude's horns are fucking me up. <laughs> His horns messing up my composition. Gotta figure it out. They're making it hell for me. Gotta figure this shit out. All right, I gotta find some some more music. go you can listen to this I gotta feed the streets my pistol gonna bleed <laughs> not that one <laughs> where is it where's that knife talk remix oh there it is I very much enjoy this song in particular because uh, there's a montage on TikTok of this guy who's a dodgeball champion and he makes his own highlight reels and in this particular highlight reel it's him just nailing unathletic women in the face with dodgeballs <laughs> and he makes his own highlight video for it it's wild I don't know if I'd do that, but it, it does make me laugh. Most of the music I listen to makes me laugh. 
Try this shit and had these pussies dropping like some motherfuckers. Type of nigga that can look me in the eyes. I despise when I see you better put that fucking pride to the side. Many times, plenty times, I survive. Beat this lie. Spoiler alert, this nigga dies. Keep blinkies, and you know the weed sticky. My finger itchy, glock like the leaf hickeys. Your shooter's iffy, a street punk can never diss me. I come straight up out the six and we don't spell sissies. Yeah. I fuck with her and fuck with her and her. I think that's good. This dude's a little too close to the top, but that's okay for right now. Yo, the dogs had to hit on where we knew it hurts. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. Yo, gang shit, that's all I'm on. This image does feel like gang shit. That's all I'm on. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. Nigga, gang shit, that's all I'm on. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. Nigga, gang shit, that's all I'm on. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. Let it bang, bang. Let it bang, bang. Till his brain hang. And his mama sang. And the pastor sang. All right, I gotta find a playlist that's gonna last. I haven't heard this one in a while. Let's listen to this. That was Power Glove, by the way. And they made a song for uh, Dan and I's comic, Skull and Shark, that is still going to come out in 30 years, you'll see. And uh, here's a song they made. It's pretty cool. It's called Motorcycle Cop. It's good.
Well, somebody is asking how many police officers were harmed during the making of this track. I don't know, but this song is about a character from Skull and Shark, who's uh, who's one of like the crazier characters in the book. Personal favorite, Dan and I's that nobody's ever seen. We just did a bunch of concept art for it, <laughs> and then wrote the story with him in it. back to the Blood Brothers playlist. I've had just enough sickness that this is going to get me through the end. For centuries, the Society of the Black Dragon has sanctioned an ancient rite of combat known as the Kumite. Open only to the world's most lethal warriors. It has never been won by a Westerner. You are not Japanese. I can do it now. For the first time, the true story of America's super agent can be revealed. Carpenter Brew. No yeah, I don't have it in me. It's too serious for me right now. So basically all I'm doing here is getting my values ready for like a paint over so I'm going to lighten up all these values to like this super light blue like I've done in the past and then I just kind of do render passes on top of that so all of this is really just kind of underpainting <laughs> 
for the final thing. So I don't, I'm not like really worried about this drawing. As long as the values and the lighting are kind of there, that's really all I need. Eventually going to black my screen out so that I can hop over into Clip Studio and not accidentally show you work related stuff. And then I'll uh, change the values that I'm rendering here to a. Uh, I'm going to change all the values um, from just like grays and white rendering and blacks and all that and just change it to uh, a scale of opacity so that I can just change that blue color and then render from there. And if ever there's something that I'm not like crazy about, I just kind of erase out back to the initial sketch to make sure it's still reading the way I want it to. He's got the style and he's going to prove it, prove it, prove it. might keep the rendering super light actually now that I'm looking at these guys might not worry about all the values do like a very minimal lighting to maintain kind of the, the overall structure of the characters rather than trying to make them look super real or anything like that that kind of looks ugly. It looks okay on the little fat guy on the bottom, but not for like the the DBZ faces really. It starts to make them look a little weird, like they need more realistic features or something. So probably won't do that. All right, I'm gonna black my screen out. I'll be back in a second. I really should just save all my Patreon stuff to a specific folder, <laughs> not not meld it with everything else. Here we are in Clip Studio. All right, let's change all of these. Alright, now let's 
change the color of these guys. Slowly going to build in my values. Glad we got past all the drawings at least. That's nice. sunshine and rainbows it's a very mean and nasty place and i don't care how tough you are it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it you me or nobody is going to hit as hard as life but it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward how much you can take and keep moving forward that's how winning is done now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that.
I'm very focused right now. If you're wondering why I'm so quiet. <laughs> Riley says, I'm in my depressed era, so I'm asking a ton of questions. Have you got any advice on making a large personal project a really good portfolio piece? Well, how to make a large project into a portfolio piece? I mean, that's a tough one. You just put it in your portfolio, really. But how to handle a large project and plan it all out. You just gotta figure out how fast you are and figure out a timeline that makes sense. It's more about a realistic structure. What's measured gets managed. But if you go in blind, it's really hard to get anything done. You have to have an idea of how fast you are realistically how long something's going to take you to plan out large projects. The reason my values are so limited right now, I find it uh, very beneficial to work in mid-range values for as long as possible before dipping really dark or really bright in terms of like uh, my rendering. It's like if I can slowly build up to mid-tones, then I have so much more control over the forms. So I try to limit it and build and build and build. Paint into the white of the canvas. By the way, I'm recording a long form video here. So this will be a thing for patrons where I do a full voiceover of this video and actually walk through everything that I'm doing in depth.
the music's too loud. There you go. <laughs> Just going through the chat for a second. I'm mostly concerned with the forms right now. So all the little details, like textural things that are going to be on the character's skin, or really like anything like that, like finite tiny things. Like that's not what I'm thinking about right now. I'm not worried about it. I'm just making sure that the forms read. somebody saying that unironically this music is motivating them let me tell you I was a maniac when it came to music like this I'd like watch motivational like movies and things and get super emotional <laughs> when I was like 19 20 well probably like all my early 20s I listened to all this stuff Waking up at like 5 a.m. and running in Boston across bridges, listening to this stuff, full blast in my headphones. Openly weeping about dreams that I have of achieving. <laughs> He's a crazy person. So I get it.
Is it Dave really is that guy? Yeah, nah, like I I literally would <laughs> like I watched Vision Quest and there's a scene in that movie where he talks about uh Pele scoring a goal and there's more to it than that. You can look it up. But uh when I was nineteen, that pumped me up so much I just started weeping. And I, I was like that. Like, if I got pumped up about something, it came out in, like, tears sometimes. My my hype level would elevate too high. It would take over my body.
you he is enemy enemy deserve no mercy I love how satisfying rendering and credit is. It's like ridiculous with this brush. It's like meh. I don't know why it's so nice. 
I don't know what wizardry they're doing to make it look like this. I love it. The music is perfect for Goldo. Absolutely. Lewis Whitworth saying in your 2021 link inking video, you mentioned having horrible diarrhea and you need to see a doctor about it. Curious how it is now. Uh, I, I never went to a doctor. It's, it's fine. It's just that I got it a lot. So, you know, it was, it was brutal. Despite the bad news. 
And it isn't very nice when you left Alone, your lady treats you badly If you hang on the phone, take off Shove your loving on the wheels Put the pedal to the floor Cause you're heading for the hills Gotta get away, can't take it no more Man, you don't need this, leave her at the door <laughs> am I making this face right now? Yes, I am. Right, I'm gonna hop off of this in about 10 minutes. Just gonna render a bit more.
what studies would I encourage for improving your values? The thing that helped me the best was uh, just doing straight color studies of like still life paintings. Just overall, that helped me the most. Focused on like more dramatic lighting scenarios. <laughs> what about any advice to simply draw more? Yes, that's the advice. Draw more. <laughs> that, that's, that is the advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Draw a lot. Study a lot. academics you know like anatomy study drawing like that type of thing so usually what I do is loop that kind of study into a project that I want to do so comics help me a lot with that not literally just drawing studies over and over again because it's hard for me to feel productive doing just studies so I needed to kind of turn it into something else at the same time in order to feel good about it. Before I hop off of here, I'm gonna open up Photoshop just to show you why I'm like rendering my values like this and what I do after that to adjust. All right, let me like mute. Well, let me turn off my screen for a sec.
All right. So I keep my values very mid-range, but like what I end up doing is I do a selective color layer and then I go to neutrals and I just kind of adjust for whatever character I'm doing. So this character is green and Well, the armor is a little different, but you'll see in a second once I adjust. Let's see. So I just kind of changed the overall colors, the values here, so that I'm getting something that's going to service the final character render. So then once I add color to this, it'll start to really pop a bit and then in all these underpainting kind of brushstrokey things I've done in Krita will feed into the final painting real well yeah you see how it went from like this kind of neutral thing to having a bit of like a weird color range to it. So I really like how easy it is to kind of jump to this and then drop color beneath it. And it makes it just like a quick render from there. So yeah, all this, uh, well, pretty much the whole thing that you've been watching me render has all been in Krita. And then I just do adjustments in Photoshop, and then I, I also paint with a chalk brush in Photoshop to kind of blend everything together. So yeah, that's going to do it for tonight. Thanks all for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, I can finish this one up relatively soon, but I'm going to do the full process of this on Patreon. So the sketch that you didn't see from the start, and then other uh, videos I'm going to record after this. I'll go through the whole process of this with like full commentary, talk about everything I'm doing, explain the process in depth so that hopefully you can apply it to your own work. And if you don't know already, we're doing a comic challenge on the Patreon Discord at the moment. So if you'd like to join up with that, that's still ongoing until the basically the middle of February. And uh, yeah, that one's pretty cool. So you want to join up or if you're already a patron patron why do i keep saying patron if you're if you're already a patron and you don't have a submission for that feel free to join up and do something simple maybe just a three panel garfield newspaper style comic but yeah i really appreciate all the support thank you all for hanging out with me and we do these streams every thursday night so subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification when i post up these lives you don't have to look for it on Instagram or Twitter. But yeah, 